Hey guys, welcome back. This is part three of the Learn to Homebrew Day whole series. So we're gonna focus on bottling today. Our batch is ready to be bottled. So I'm gonna show you guys everything you need to know to bottle your first beer. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is this is gonna be our bottling bucket. So I'm gonna throw the valve on it. So super easy, it's just like a thread on kind of situation. You can do it by hand. Again, I like to turn the valves themselves because it kind of makes it easier to tighten. Okay, so just gonna leave that there. We're gonna sanitize this bucket um, before we put in our beer. And we need to measure out how much sugar we are going to use to carbonate it. So the sugar needs to get added because there's basically nothing left for the yeast to ferment in the fermenter. It's totally done. So to carbonate it, we need to give the yeast something to eat so that they can fart CO2 and carbonate your beer. So if you get a kit, um, they usually send you exactly how much you need. This is four ounces. I think the going wisdom is um, you put one ounce of corn sugar to one gallon of wort. So I'm actually gonna split this in half because I'm only gonna bottle half my batch and then I'm gonna keg the rest. But I'll show you guys, I'm just like out of bottles because I don't do this very often. Um, one thing you might wanna get if you just have a standard kit, they typically don't come with bottling wands, but this will make your life so much easier because this basically lets the beer go, this stops it. So you can just put it in your bottle and lift it out when you're done. All right, so now I'm going to mix my corn sugar with about a cup of water, and then we're gonna sanitize this bucket and throw that in it once it's cooled down a bit. You can't put like boiling water with your beer or you can kill some of the yeast. So just let it cool down in your fridge a bit and you'll be good. Okay, so I am putting in my corn sugar into my pot. Remember, I'm only doing half. You guys should do the whole thing if you're bottling the whole thing. And if you're actually measuring, be more scientific than I am. Okay, so this is starting to boil. We're gonna let it go for five minutes and then stick it right in the fridge. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make some sanitizer. So I've got half a five gallon bucket here, so I'm gonna do half an ounce. And I'm just gonna swirl that around to kind of mix it together. All right, so anything that's gonna touch beer, I'm gonna sanitize with this. So my bottling wand. And my bottles. So how I treat my bottles is first I wash them all with uh, OxyClean Free or Brewery Wash or, you know, anything that can get any crud off of them in hot water um, just to be extra safe. And I like to, like, honestly, bottling is way easier with two people um, because you can kind of keep the train going. But if you don't have two people, um, I just try to make sure that everything's sanitized and ready to go as I am ready to bottle. With the bottle filler, it's a little easier because you can just stop and start whenever you want. Okay, so now I'm gonna sanitize my bottling bucket. I'm honestly just gonna take one of these bottles. And you just want sanitizer on every surface. I'm just pouring it around. This should work fine. Um, and I'm gonna make sure I get some in my valve. If my valve will open. All right. Just swirl it around, make sure you get all the surfaces. And 
do with your hand on the rim. I don't know if I have lid to this, honestly. All right, and I'm just gonna roll as I dump it back into my sanitizer bucket. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to take my chilled corn syrup water stuff and just dump it right in. And then we'll fill on top of that. I'm gonna use my kettle lid to just cover this up. And again, sanitizing it just in case. All right. All right, so with our kit, we got some silicone tubing. We're gonna sanitize this. Just make sure you get sanitizer throughout the whole thing. Okay, so this is what our beer is gonna look like. It's pretty clear at the top and then you've got like a layer of stuff at the bottom which is your yeast, trube, everything. I'm gonna take one end of this hose and ah. I'm gonna sanitize this with my sprayer. I strongly suggest you get a sprayer of some sort just for things like this. All right, so that's all sanitized. Connecting this. All right. And now I'm gonna transfer it from the fermenter into the bottling bucket. All right, so this is easy. Just make sure the outside of your tubing is all sanitized because it's probably gonna touch the inside of your bottling bucket. Make sure your valves are closed, of course. And let her rip. So I'm only gonna fill this halfway um, because I'm only bottling about 24 bottles. But if you wanna do 48, just transfer the whole thing. And one thing you wanna to try to prevent is splashing around the wort coming through here because that'll give you an oxidized beer. It's not great just in general for taste and appearance. It'll darken your beer a little bit and it can taste like cardboard. Okay, so that's two and a half gallons. I'm gonna take this off. Scooch this guy over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dip this in sanitizer again, and then connect it to this guy, which I'm gonna sanitize. Of course, none of the valves are the same size. All right. So then the other side, I'm gonna connect to my bottling wand, or you can just fill directly with the end of this. It's just kind of a nightmare. All right, so we're also going to sanitize our caps. I have a friend who up until about two months into brewing, they realized that they needed to sanitize their caps. So just make sure you do. All right. Okay, so let's bottle. Um, we have our capper right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cap after every single fill and you need gravity. And once you're done with your bottling wand, just stick it back in the sanitizer. Okay, so let's do this. It's been a while since I've bottled. First time in a long time's a charm. You gotta open up your valve. Alrighty, let's do this. Um, Don't worry about bubbles in here. It's food safe, all good. Just gaining a little extra gravity with that. Okay, now let's do it. Okay, again, you don't wanna splash very much, so try to fill from the bottom. And you can get it right up to the lip and then pull and this bottling wand um, gives you the perfect fill. Then bottle capper, 
just goes on it. And like that. It takes a little bit of pressure, but with the ones that only go down to there, it's a lot easier to do. Some of them go all the way down and I recommend not using those, they suck. Alrighty. I haven't bottle conditioned anything in probably over two years. Some things you should know about bottling. So kits will typically send you corn sugar to use. You can also use table sugar. Stay away from honey. Um, if you bottle with honey, it's kind of difficult to know exactly how much sugar is in the honey because, you know, uh, different flowers give different levels of fructose. So Honey is just dicey because you don't actually know how much sugar is going in and you can create bottle bombs. So bottle bombs are just when you explode your beer bottles. Um, which is another reason why you should try to stick with what the kit sends you or a good rule of thumb is one ounce per one gallon. Table sugar I believe is a little bit less than corn sugar. There's a bunch of calculators where you can figure out every kind of sugar and what you should be using. So when your beer's carbonating, you still don't want it to get light because it can get light struck. So if you know the like typical Heineken, Heineken flavor, the reason that beer has that flavor is because it's in green bottles and typically it's light struck, but that's just like kind of how they market it now. Um, you, so brown bottles, prevent the most light from getting into your beer. Um, you can ferment in green bottles, but you need to keep them in a dark place. You can also use sling top bottles. I'll show you one in a second. So these bottles are kind of a brewery favorite because you don't have to actually put a bottle cap on them. Um, and like Grolsch has these kind of bottles. Uh, there's some, uh, I think ginger beer at Trader Joe's that uses these bottles. They're typically green when you get them unless you get a Belgian. Um, so you can keep an eye out for those if you wanna prevent having to do the whole bottle cap thing, which it's not that bad if you have an actual good capper, but if you don't, it's awful. All right, so that's all the bottling I'm doing for today. I'm gonna throw these back in the box that they came in, seal them up, and just let them sit for two weeks. Um, if you try them before two weeks, they might have a yeasty flavor and you kind of need them all to settle. And then I recommend when you want to drink them, put them in the refrigerator the night before. So if, if there is anything suspended, it'll drop to the bottom. And when you're drinking a uh, bottle conditioned beer, there's going to be a layer of yeast and stuff at the bottom. So don't drink it out of the bottle, pour it into a glass and pour it pretty slowly and you won't have any of the yeast flavors coming at you. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this helpful, like and subscribe. I've got a Patreon going with ad-free videos, merch, happy hour, early videos, and you can find that in the link above. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.